Hi there. Welcome to the National Weather Service at Albany's Spring 2025 Skywarn Spotter Training Session. My name is Abby Gant. I'm a meteorologist here at NWS Albany, and I am going to be walking you through part one of our six-part YouTube video Skywarn Spotter Training Session for the ongoing spring and upcoming summer severe weather season. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty information uh, that we have laid out in part one, I just wanted to take a second to say that on behalf of all of us here at NWS Albany and uh, on behalf of everyone across all NWS offices across the country, thank you so much for your interest in and dedication to the Skywarn Spotter program. Whether you are brand new to the program or you are already um, a Skywarn Spotter who is just retaking uh, the spring training for fun, um, you, all that you do means so much to us. We would not be able to do what we do without your reports and the things that um, you all contribute to our severe weather operations. So thank you so much. All of your reports and your information make a difference in everything that we do and all the products that we put out um, on a daily basis. So again, thank you so much and we will get started. Now, I know I said previously before we get into the nitty gritty, but I'm gonna continue on that for just a split second. Um, so before we really get into, again, the information contained in part one, I wanna just walk you through exactly how you're going to complete this Skywarn uh, spotter training. So right now we only have online training available for the spring season. Um, so what we're doing this year, um, as I said previously, is a six part YouTube video series. You can visit our website and go to a link that will have all six parts of our um, uh, video series. You can also at that link find a quiz that you can take after you have watched all six parts of the videos. You can take that quiz to receive credit and become certified as a trained spotter. Now, if you don't have time to go and watch all six parts of our YouTube series, um, you can also take a Comet MedEd module, which is an online course that has been approved and is recognized by the National Weather Service. There is also a quiz associated with that module. And once you pass that quiz, you will receive a certificate um, with the Comet modules that you can keep for your records and also uh, send to us um, so that we can recognize you as a Skywarn spotter. Um, all of this information is on our website. So if you have any questions on what is um, available here on this slide, please go to our website or um, our contact information will be linked in the last um, of the video series. So go ahead, feel free to send us an email, give us a call, um, whatever you need, we're here for you. All right, so um, just a brief outline of everything that we're gonna go over um, throughout the six parts of our training series. So part one, we're gonna walk through an introduction and talk about spotter safety. It's arguably one of the most important probably not even arguably, it is the most important part of our Skywarn Spotter training session. So make sure to pay attention during this part. Um, part two, you'll go over severe weather products. Part three, we'll talk a little bit about thunderstorms, um, clouds, lightning, hail, um, all kinds of parts of uh, severe thunderstorms and um, how they form. Part four will be uh, thunderstorms continued. Um, we'll talk about damaging winds and tornadoes. Part five, we'll be uh, talking about heat, excessive rainfall, and flooding. And then finally, part six, we'll discuss tropical systems and sending reports to the NWS. Now, that's also very, very important, um, but still your safety obviously is the number one. So sending reports might be second to uh, your safety there. Um, so all of these parts are going to be um, narrated by one of our uh, meteorologists here at NWS Albany. So you'll get to sort of meet some of us, or at least our voices anyway. Um, and after uh, the completion of each video, if you visit the Skywarn section of our website, you can take a short quiz. If you receive an 80% or greater, you will pass. And at the end, you'll receive a certificate and a local, local spotter help sheet uh, via email so that you can use that uh, to help you send us your reports in the hopefully near future. All right, so let's talk a little bit about us. Who are we? Um, we are located, uh, National Weather Service Albany uh, is located at the University 
at Albany E-Tech building. Um, so we are on the University of Albany's campus, on the Harriman campus. Um, our staff consists of a uh, consists of a few different sections. We have our management, which uh, consists of our meteorologist in charge, our warning coordination meteorologist, our science and operations officer, and our electronic systems analyst. Um, then after management comes us, the meteorologists. So we have general meteorologists and lead meteorologists, depending on experience um, and different things, different roles that we all play here out in operations. But um, meteorologist is our title. Then we have three electronics technicians. They work very hard to make sure that all of our systems are up to date and working properly. Um, all of the things that we get observations from, like our um, ASOS sites and our radar, especially our radar, um, they're the ones who uh, keep up uh, all the maintenance on those things. We also have an information technology officer. So uh, this person is able to um, maintain all of the systems here at NWS Albany, make sure all of our data is coming into our computers and make sure our computers are functioning properly, all of our products are getting out, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then we have our observing program leader who deals a lot with all of the observations that we get across um, our for warn county warning area. Um, we have a senior service hydrologist who deals a lot with um, hydrology, so water, um, flash flooding, river flooding, um, heavy rainfall, all these different things um, that kind of play a role into not just the weather, but um, uh, water as well. And then um, an administrative support assistant um, who helps us basically function uh, as an office with all the other things that we have going on. Now, this is assuming a full staff. Right now, we do not have a full staff, so our uh, staffing organization doesn't look exactly like this, but in a typical National Weather Service office, this is what our, um, our staff consists of. Now, one thing that does reign true here um, all the time for pretty much every NWS office across the country is that we operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So we always have someone here. That means if you have something to report to us in the middle of the night, we will answer your call because we will be here. Now, I've said this a couple times, um, NWS offices across the country. Now, I truly mean that. So we have a total of 122 National Weather Service offices located throughout um, the contiguous United States, um, in Alaska, in Hawaii. We even have a couple um, outside of uh, the general state territories of the United States. So we have Guam uh, has an office and Puerto Rico also has an office. So all of these different colors and the um, names of the offices basically show um, the county warning areas or the CWAs that each office has. Each office has their own individual area or set number of counties that they are issuing forecasts and uh, subsequent products for. So Albany's is located right up in here, um, right to the north and east. I just realized you probably can't even see my mouse. So, uh, <laughs> so Albany's is located uh, up in the northeast there. Um, we cover portions of um, Eastern New York and Western New England, and I will switch slides here and we can see that a little bit better. So, um, like I said, as you can see, we cover portions of Eastern New York and Western New England. Uh, so we actually forecast for portions of four different states, uh, those being New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Um, so our county warning area specifically consists of 19 counties total. So 15 of those fall in the state of New York, two of them fall in the state of Vermont, one in Massachusetts, and then one in Connecticut. Um, we border six other offices, uh, six other National Weather Service offices. You can kind of see in the picture there. Uh, those are Buffalo, Burlington, Binghamton, uh, Gray Portland, Boston, and Upton. Um, and so there's a lot of National Weather Service offices that actually cover the state of New York. And really, there's a couple National Weather Service offices that cover each, um, each state, which uh, is pretty typical. Um, that's not just uh, unique to us. There are multiple uh, 
National Weather Service offices that cover multiple states. But that means that each state needs what's called a state liaison office. And what that means is that one office operates as the liaison to of all of the different offices. We take all of the information that um, is contained within our forecasts and we represent all of those offices and give that information over to the state, whether it be via briefings, um, phone calls, whatever it is, we are the primary contact um, for state officials to call us and say, um, hey, you know, we need such and such information on these certain areas or, you know, something to that effect. So um, we communicate on behalf of all of the other uh, National Weather Service offices that cover the state of New York. So here's a little bit of a closer look at our coverage area. So this is our county warning area or our CWA. Uh, so you can see those 15 counties there in, uh, in New York, the two in Vermont uh, and the two, uh, one in Massachusetts and one in uh, Connecticut. And what's really unique to our county warning area is the um, diversity of terrain. Um, I believe it's about a um, little over uh, a third of our county warning area is situated at over 1500 feet. So we have a lot of complex terrain that really drives so many complexities um, with different weather, weather and meteorological phenomena. So um, we also are someplace that sees all four seasons. And so um, we really get a wide variety of weather as it is. Um, but then you add that complex terrain and that can really um, enhance um, or even be detrimental to the type of weather that we see on a daily basis. Um, so um, we also have um, our hydro hydrologic area of responsibility. So we don't just have meteorologists. I said earlier, we have a senior service hydrologist. And so um, our hydrologic area of responsibility is a little bit different than what our um, county warning area is. So you can see um, in the image on the right, the major river basins in ALY, uh, hydrologic area of responsibility or our HSA. So all of these different basins, they kind of can leak into other areas that we don't necessarily cover by county um, necessarily. One, um, Prime example is the Mohawk Basin there, uh, extends into uh, Bingham, National Weather Service Binghamton's area. So what happens is, is we have um, a little bit larger of a hydrologic area of responsibility because water is flowing in all different, all different ways, right? It's not necessarily, it doesn't stop in a certain place or, you know, it's not that we can, um, you know, issue a product for, um, you know, for a river that just stops dead or something like that. So it's just a little bit bigger because of those basins and the rivers that kind of run uh, continuously through our county warning area. So um, we also are covered by the Northeast River Forecast Center. Um, so that also plays a little bit of a role in um, the um, shape of our uh, hydrologic area of responsibility. So the National Weather Service as a whole, and this, is, this isn't just for us, this is across the organization, um, is really building on this idea of a weather-ready nation. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to sit here and read this slide word for word. There's a lot of words on here. I'm not going to bore you to death. Um, but really what this means is that we want to make sure that communities are ready for extreme weather, water, and climate events because really, quite frankly, blue sky days are not the days that are going to be the most impactful, right? So days where we could experience um, heavy snowfall or um, really gusty winds, um, severe weather, flooding, all of these different things, we want to make sure that you are prepared for them. And that's not just you watching this video, it's all of the people in all of the communities that we serve, um, both at a local level and as on a national level. And so, especially for our region where we can have so many, or we can be vulnerable to so many meteorological hazards, we want to make sure that our communities are ready for them. And so basically, the Skywarn program is a means of building 
upon this weather ready nation and making sure that we're going out into communities and communicating and educating people on um, how the weather works. Um, you know, what we're forecasting, what we're looking for, what our products mean, all of these different things so that we can make sure that you're educated on not just what happens and why things happen, but how you're supposed to prepare for that. And so this really, um, the Skywarn Spotter program really helps to be able to prepare people about it because you're able to learn exactly what it is that you are supposed to do in a situation of flooding or uh, in a situation where there's a tornado. Um, and all of uh, you also learn about all of the different resources that are available to you to provide you with the information about what to do and what to expect. Um, so that's just really um, the tie in there to uh, the Weather Ready Nation. So like I said previously, um, spotter safety is our utmost priority here. All right, um, severe weather is no joke. Um, obviously, we are not a place that necessarily gets baseball sized hail very often or tornadoes very often or anything like that, but um, we do get severe weather. Um, the reality is we are definitely uh, vulnerable to flooding some areas more than others. We are definitely um, vulnerable to uh, very strong uh, to damaging winds. And so, um, and even hail at times and, and sometimes tornadoes as well. So, um, you know, we really want to make sure that even though you are going to be going out and providing us with reports, that you are safe and you're doing it in a way that is going to ensure your safety. Um, unfortunately, over 280 fatalities occur each year in the United States from thunderstorm related hazards. And so we do not want, we don't want anybody to perish because of, um, for whatever reason from a thunderstorm or the hazards that are presented from a thunderstorm, but we certainly don't want to put any of you at risk for um, sustaining an injury or God forbid uh, death, um, just trying to get a report to us. Okay. So we really want to make sure that you are safe when you are giving us your reports. So like I said, your safety is always, always, always our number one. Okay. Do not send us a report if you are not able to do so safely, especially when it comes to something like flooding. If there's a road that's flooded, don't go and drive or try to drive down a road, a flooded roadway, just to try to see how much water is on that road, how much standing water is on the road. Or don't, you know, um, go outside when it's crazy lightning outside and, and you know, the hail is uh, the size of quarters or golf balls or whatever it is just to try to report that to us. Okay. So, always make sure that you are prepared for what is going to be coming. It's not enough to look outside and say, this is what's going on now. It's so, so important to make sure that you are aware of what is going to be going on in the near future as well. So that if you are out and potentially giving us a report, you don't get caught in a very dangerous situation. All right. So we do have um, a few uh, actually more than a few, but we have um, just some graphics here um, specifically noting um, how to remain safe, especially during flooding. That's something that's a really big one um, for, for us um, and for people across the NWS as a whole across the country. Um, you know, floodwaters are extremely dangerous. So um, making sure that you are aware of the different products that we are putting out, um, aware of you know, your surroundings with barricades, don't try to drive through them, don't, you know, uh, try to walk through them either. Um, have your wireless emergency, have your phone with you so that you can get those wireless emergency alerts um, if we ever put them out. Um, you know, if there is a storm that is, well, specifically for uh, the severe season, if there's a severe thunderstorm that is classified as uh, considerable um, or an emergency situation, the wireless emergency alerts will be set off and you need to make sure that you have your phone so that you can get that information and be able to take action immediately.